Ritchie, the artist, and we are delighted to have the installation of the Ed Raddus Park sculpture. It makes you want to play ball and have a lot of fun, and that's what we're hoping that the theme, the sports theme, is really going to be accessible to the public. Uh, this is a public art project for Hillsborough County, and uh, we're really excited about having the residents of Hillsborough County and the visitors to this particular park, which is all a sports park, being able to have access to the sculpture immediately uh, as a piece of art and as a sign. The typical processes involved with creating large sculpture is the development of a scale model. At this point, you've met with a client, you've discussed their ideas, and you've illustrated your proposal. The scale model is important because it gives you visual reference from all angles. During fabrication, you'll use the model to determine lengths angles and the relationship of the different elements. Sometimes if I have a complicated steel design, I'll even create a scale model based on the engineered drawings. I'd rather problem solve on a scale model than out in the field when I'm working on the actual sculpture. Rockwork has an internal steel armature. It consists of primary steel, secondary steel, and then a galvanized lab. All the steel specifications are specced by the engineer. Uh, your primary steel is going to be your larger members. They could be anywhere from 6x6, six 4x4, six, four four, and it could be tubular or angular steel. Your secondary steel is going to be your smaller members, one inch, two inch, and things like rebar, which can be bent to give you the shape that is necessary for the sculpture you're trying to create. Uh, the third application is the galvanized lab. That Once these welds are made and you've determined your shape, you will apply your galvanized lab and tie it off with galvanized tie wire, upon which you will then place the quarter inch scratch coat that will stiffen this cage and allow you to then move into your final plastering. Hi, my name is Janine Pardee. I'm a, a professional engineer with Duo Associates Inc. And I do structural engineering work mainly for the theme parks in the Orlando area and sometimes theme parks in California and other parts of the world. Uh, I like the structural engineering for uh, entertainment type projects because I get to work very closely with creative and artistic people to bring their projects into reality. And uh, it makes for very interesting structural engineering. We're doing our large beams and members that will be holding the heavier elements in the sculpture. <clears throat> These get into some pretty complicated angles because they're traveling back and tying into each other and oftentimes <clears throat> we have to place kickers to again bring the load back to our big pieces of steel and uh, today we're working on the mitt area and the last member we'll put in now is going to be the bat and we'll tie our mitt into the bat at that point and that will resolve our structure.
sculpture that you saw in the previous footage showed the steel armature. Since then, the steel armature has been covered with galvanized lath, which is attached with galvanized tie wire. That creates a form which we can apply the first coat of stucco, which is called the scratch coat. The scratch coat is a quarter inch thick, and it is used to stiffen the cage. Once the stucco is applied, it is raked with this tool, which as you can see, will create a mechanical bond for the next coat to go on to. The bat, which is traveling in the background there, has received its finished coat. It was white stucco with integral color. I use tints in the stucco because they're less likely to fade due to UV exposure. Once we finish the other elements with the tinted stucco, then we'll begin the painting process. Uh, we'll have some wood graining and, of course, the pattern on the soccer ball. Uh, today what we're doing is doing the final coat of stucco on the soccer ball and we've created a template out of three quarter inch plywood which we've mounted at the center of the soccer ball and now that will allow us to apply the stucco and then swing the template to give us a true circle. One of the products I like to use is integral color, and that is a dry pigment that we add to the white stucco. And the reason I like to use it is because it resists UV fading. Uh, what I did yesterday is I made a few samples. These are custom mixed, uh, as in it's a ratio, perhaps it's 50% of a light yellow to a 50% rose color to get this. And I'm going to go ahead and alter it one more time. prior to applying the acid stains. In the meantime, I've been working on the soccer ball and created a pattern. This took some mathematical calculations to have the pattern work out properly, going not only the basic shape in the front, but that it all ties in together once the pattern goes around the ball. I transferred the pattern with chalk and now I'm coming back in with a concrete paint that's toluene based and doing the line work and the next step will be to block in the the shapes with the black paint <laughs> The acid stains, what I like about them is they actually etch the concrete and they are flat, which is conducive to the leather that I'm trying to um, paint today on the mitt. I'm working with, um, it's a brand called Schofield and it's, uh, it is a hydrochloric acid. And uh, today I'm just actually trying to get a little bit of the color into the decorative uh, stitch work and patterns, trying to show a little bit of different um, color, colors on the, the mitt. 